Today we're going to mix colors strategically so that we can be aware of what our lights, mediums, and darks are in any given painting. Let's get started. Yesterday I put up a video which showed me using this method of finding your lights, your mediums, and your darks. And I had people ask me questions about it, so I thought what I would do today is talk about color. So, whenever I'm painting, I make a light, a medium, and a dark column. The lights are going to be my lightest colors, my mediums are going to be mid-tones, and my darks are going to be my darkest colors. So typically, it's not a surprise to you, I'm sure, is that lights tend to be yellows, uh, mediums tend to be reds, and oftentimes greens, you know, lighter greens, and darks tend to be uh, your uh, purple, blue. You know, so in other words, what I'm sort of saying is the fire side of the color wheel ends up being your mediums and your lights, and the water side of your color wheel usually ends up being your darks. But although we know that's true, that might not be uh, applicable to what we're currently painting. And we're getting ready to paint peonies in the month of May. And painting peonies means painting a lot of white. And it takes a lot of color to paint the color white. <laughs> so getting your values in correct shape is really important. So here's my value finder, which is a piece of plexiglass, red piece of plexiglass. You can see the darks are darker through the plexiglass. The mediums almost barely show up, but they show up enough that I can they register. The lights won't register at all. So that informs me I have a light column, a medium column, and a dark column. Now, these are only relative to each other in this case. In other words, if I was to make a painting using these colors, this would be true, but only because they're relative to each other. There, now I've added, um, what I did here was answer the question of what do you do if you want to make a, med a darker red? that won't be in the medium column. Then what you have to do is you have to use a lot of red, in this case alizarin red, which is a dark red, add a little bit of blue to it, in that case ultramarine blue. So it still reads as mostly red, but certainly getting near purple, but not, not totally purple, but just enough. It tips just enough so that it ends up in the dark column. So I can make reds go into the dark column, but in order to do that, I have to mix them with some, uh, with some blue. Here's an example of where, what do you do if you have a yellow thing and you need it to be a mid value or a dark value? Well, what I did there was I picked some quinacridone gold and I put that in my columns and I can see that I can make a medium yellow out of it. Now what I'm, now what I'm trying to do is get a darker yellow to manifest itself. And this is the challenge when you're painting yellow things is that it, they tend to get they can look really muddy and brown. So I'm trying to get as close to a dark yellow, still maintaining yellow. And in this case, I've used some quinacridone gold and some burnt sienna. It still only left me in the medium column. And so what I have to do is I had to pick up a little bit of blue. I picked up a little bit of blue and that got me in the dark column. So by now I am into brown. So if you have that problem where you know that you have a thing that's yellow and you know that it has a very dark element to it, you can decide to paint it in brown, or you can make a color value swap out. You might decide that you want to pick uh, a purple, like that um, darker red that I mixed, because that will work as well. And you see that a lot in paintings, where people don't go toward neutrals, but instead will choose a color to swap out. As long as the value is the same, you can do that. Now the next thing that I'm doing is light, mediums, and darks, and this is with a Prussian blue. Now this is using water, so I can get a darker Prussian blue, not adding much water, a medium one, adding a little bit more water, and a light with a lot of water. And there it is. I put it in the medium column, and that's, but it, it's, it doesn't work. I decided that it's even, though it has a lot of water added to it, a Prussian blue, even with a lot of water added to it, really doesn't legitimately belong in that medium column. So that won't work. I'm going to have to pick a different blue, probably something, a lighter blue, like a cerulean blue, and water that down to get in the medium column. Um, here's the problem now happening with yellow. I've got a light yellow. That'll read as medium. 
which is the quinacridone gold. And now in order to get a dark, oh, I see what I did. I crossed them out because what I was trying to do is I was trying to match a yellow to the Prussian blue value above it. And neither one was dark enough, so I crossed it out. And sometimes you have to do that and realize that uh, you, you can't get there with a color value swap out, that you're going to have to figure out or, uh, another way of getting the value that you want. And that's okay. This is, again, the Prussian blue with a, with a little bit of water. So it's very, very dark. And now that, that Prussian blue is now darker than anything I put in that first array of colors. So you see, you can make, I can make that value range. My darks could be a dark plus uh, one. I can make an even darker column if I want to. But I, which, you know, and it all depends on what your subject is. If I'm painting a white peony, I'm pretty sure that that Prussian blue is never going to show up in the painting. I don't need it because it's always going to be darker than, than, um, than, I, than anything I need, to, need, need or want it to be. So I'm going to want to key everything lighter if I can. So my, my point here just is it's really helpful to make these columns of lights, mediums, and darks so you can start to see not what a color, color's name is. You know, a color's name could be uh, black, but with enough water added to it, it could really be a medium, not a dark plus one. Now, the other thing that happens in watercolor is that we can do some triad work. This is uh, Prussian blue with a little bit of alizarin crimson, and I'm putting in a little bit of, um, oh, I, there's a yellow that pops in here. I don't remember what it was, probably a Hansa yellow. So there are times in, in watercolor work where you're putting three or maybe sometimes more colors all together, and that's fine. That's, that's one of the great things about being able to use watercolor is letting these colors come together. And that's when I talk about my, my sign-off, which is uh, mix for color, mass for value. I've mixed for color, so I have some medium colors going, or actually they're light colors going in there. I let them meet on the paper, and when I look at them through the value finder, they're gonna, that's going to read as a light, a light go, go in the light column. Now, th these would go in the dark column. It's Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, and uh, I think a burnt sienna might make an appearance here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, burnt sienna. That's a typical triad I would use for um, a dark, like if I had a really dark shadow shape to make. Or let's say it was a brown tree trunk. It, again, it all depends relative to all the other decisions that you've made in the painting. This is only dark and looks very dark compared to the front side of the box because the front side of the box is lights. I didn't make the front side of the box a medium. I made in terms of value. I used several colors to make a light. So that, juxtaposed to the darks, makes that um, light side of the box look even lighter. And now I'm going to pull a shadow out, which I'm hoping, and I think I achieved this, which is going to be a medium value. Just showing you that you, beyond just deciding what light, medium, and dark colors you're going to use, that you can also put several colors together and you're going to achieve the same thing, but you have, but you have to, you don't have to do anything. But what I try to do is uh, remember that if I have a medium mass, then and I'm going to represent it with three colors, then I want to make sure that um, I've been strategic about which colors are going to fit fill in that mass, and I plan that ahead of time. So that's what's being demonstrated there. The light side of the box you can hardly see. The dark side you can see pretty well. And then that medium is just slightly darker than the front side of the box. Um, probably if uh, I didn't have a dog that hates the hair dryer, would probably put a second coat on that darker uh, shadow coming out of the box, which would be fine. It wouldn't change the value at all. But what it would do is it would make it a, a brighter a brighter looking mass than it currently is. So here's the darkest color I have on my palette, which is indigo, and that's quite dark. <laughs> and I'm just sort of challenging you to think about, uh, and, and myself as well, not to think about a color's name or what it is when you open up a tube, because there's indigo with a lot of water added to it, which really reads as a medium, and then there's indigo with a little bit of water added to it, and it's a dark. So you can't just go by what the color is in the tube. It all depends on how much water you're going to add to it. It also depends on whether or not you're going to combine it with other colors. There, I've added even more 
uh, water to this indico spot. And that doesn't, still doesn't quite get me to a light. But close. But it's always better or has been better for me in my painting experience not to use water to get to the value that I want to, but instead to mix for the value that I want to. And in order to do that, sometimes I have to tip the color a little bit. The way I had to tip that medium red by adding a little bit of blue to it, just enough so it would tip into the dark column. So that's what I do when I'm doing my paintings. I paint from my lightest lights to my darkest darks, or sometimes I paint from my darkest darks to my lightest lights. And that's what we're going to be doing in the month of May. Typically, if something is a white thing, a white peony, I'm going to paint from my lights down to my darks. And likewise, if it's a very dark peony, let's say it's a uh, dark uh, red one, I might paint from my darks to my lights. But the system is still exactly the same. I always make sure that I test dab before applying to the paper. So I hope that makes some sense when it comes to value, color, and mixing. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, master value mix for color, and join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.